Hey guys, it's Bro you Whack, and welcome to the first official Overwatch 2 tier list. I've done tier lists in the past with Overwatch 2, specifically with the second beta with the Junk Queen and the first beta with Sojourn, but now with the release of Kriko and just the live version of Overwatch 2, we're doing the first official one. <laughs> I do want to say that this is a tier list involving heroes that could possibly get nerfed. Heroes involving like Zarya and D.Va and especially Sombra are probably going to be changed in the near future, but at least for now, I have a good sense of where we can put some of these heroes. But always know that my tier list is probably going to be different than your tier list. I'm not always right when it comes to mine. But one hero that I'm usually always right on, at least when it comes to ranking her, is Ana. She was always great throughout the duration of Overwatch 1's lifespan. In Overwatch 2, she just picked up right where she left off, but got even better now that she's able to passively self-heal herself. So that's why I'm so confident in putting the Grandma Sniper right in the S tier. Which, by the way, I'm ranking this based on, like, must pick for S tier. A tier is great. B tier, I would say, is pretty average. C tier is below average, D is kind of bad, and F is just completely useless. You don't want to use these heroes. Anti-grenade is powerful even with the release of Kriko that can cleanse it, you can sleep all the flankers, and plus, you're a BA sniper grandma! Why wouldn't that put her on S tier alone? <laughs> Next up is my favorite cowboy in the Wild Wild West, that of course is being Bob, and my second favorite, I, I guess, is Ash. Now when it comes to Ash, just hit scans in general, they're a lot more effective because there's less shields blocking your damage, but I feel like they're a lot more replaceable with one another, like instead of a cool cast, you can play a soul. Instead of a soldier, you can play an Ash. That's not to say that Ash isn't unique. Bob is a great initiator ultimate, but I will say when it comes to this specific meta, D.Va does eat up a lot of your damage, even though I did say tanks have been downscaled a little bit. Uh, D.Va is going to be very prevalent in meta comps, and when it comes to especially Ash, someone that could easily get doved by a D.Va even with a coach gun, that kind of puts her in the B category of heroes, along with the other hit scans. That's not to say that she's bad. In fact, she's one of the better hit scans, I would argue, out of the ones that I just previously mentioned. And plus, Bob is so cute, so if I would put her in C tier, that would be doing Bob a disservice. <laughs> Batiste, he's all about spamming. Spamming your heals, spamming your AoE heals, spamming your immortality field. Like, my god, when they finally remove immortality field from the game, if that day ever comes, it's almost gonna be like the second coming in Christ. But until that day, he's gonna continue to spam his heals on the tanks, like with D.Va and Zarya, to the point where they can just go and feed and almost be a third DPS, big and beefy third DPS, to the point where, yeah, I would say if you run an Ana and a Batiste in a comp, you're gonna get away with it. You don't need the Lucio ultimate, you just need the immortality field. Batiste, he's an S tier hero, man. So, <laughs> Bastion. Bastion hasn't been made available in Overwatch 2 for like, what, three weeks now? And now the three week time period, it's been the most glorious time to play Overwatch 2. <laughs> Coincidence? I think not. So because of that reason, like, what, <laughs> would it be fair to put Bastion in the F tier because he's literally useless? Like, you can't use him, you're using him less. Let's move on to somebody that is a little bit more useful, but not by much, Brigida. Surprisingly, this is like the first time in a long time where Brigida is seen as a throw pick. Compared to other support heroes, she doesn't have a lot of heal opportunity, but compared to other support heroes, she also doesn't have a lot of DPS opportunity. Like, you want the best of both worlds? Just play a Batiste. He spams heals, and he also spams DPS. Ana, consistent heals all the round. Even Mora. Mora is the perfect example of somebody that can do it all at a lot more easier rate. So for that reason alone, that's why I'm not really feeling Brigida in Overwatch 2 because there's other support heroes that could do her job a lot better. That's why I'm putting her in the D category. She's just not, she, she's just not that effective. Here is our third favorite cowboy, the guy that don't even know his own name, Cole Cassidy. So D.Va, a very prominent tank in Overwatch 2 that's absorbing a lot of your Cole Cassidy bullets. Along with that, you no longer have a flashbang, meaning that you get outdone by a lot of flank heroes like Genji and Tracer, even though I love the Magna Grenade. And in a way, you still can't stop flank heroes with that ability alone, uh, but again, just he could be interchangeable with other heroes. If you want a better ultimate, definitely play a better hit scan. But if you're somebody that is a Cole Cassidy main, you can still get away with playing him in Overwatch 2. That's why I'm putting him in B tier right next to his uh, what, what like I feel like they have like a, a dating history in the past, Ash and Cole, but it's very complicated. And here is our first tank that we're gonna be ranking Doomfist. Doomfist, Doomfist, Doomfist. I feel like he's suffering from the fact that people haven't really practiced his new tool kit to the point where they're ridiculing him saying that he's one of the worst tanks in Overwatch 2. But at the same time, he also gets outperformed by other tanks. And that's what's so great about Overwatch 2 is that we can really measure uh, which tanks can outperform other tanks because now it's just a 1v1 format, which is where tier lists came from 
was measuring in fighting games. Back in Smash Bros, you would measure which characters can outperform other characters. And in the case of Doofus, he can outperform a lot. He can get stopped by Roadhog. Diva is just a lot more bigger. Zarya has a lot more DPS than Doofus. But what I will say over time, I feel like he will climb in the rankings because people like Get Quaked on is still showing that he's one of, if not the most mobile tank to the point where you can outlive some of these dangerous and sticky situations. But until then, he's gonna be in D tier because other tanks are just better than him. Moving on to a non-fraudulent tank, D.Va. It's no secret that D.Va is really good, but why is D.Va good? Dude, she just doesn't die! <laughs> There's really only one here that can stand toe-to-toe -to, -toe to D.Va, and we will look at her later on, but when it comes to D.Va, she could dive a lot of hit skins, making them a little bit more useless. She can dive a lot of support characters because they can't stop this 700 HP behemoth of a gamer girl. Her boosters do damage, her rocket does damage, she has great DPS up close, like D.Va is just an all-around great tank hero that can't really be countered by a lot of heroes and does a lot of countering herself. Yeah, that's a recipe for an S-tier hero. Plus, Diva Bomb is still really good, unless I'm using it, because I'm not great at Diva Bombs. I ain't Kobe, I ain't shooting for threes, I'm more or less just trying to uh, squish people <laughs> with my mech, because that's the only ways I'm gonna get kills with my mech. Our favorite weave is up next, and that is Genji. Now, when it comes to all these heroes, if you put in a thousand hours into each and every single one of these, I feel like you have the most to unlock in terms of potential with Genji. Now, when it comes to player skill, that's not really a factor when it comes to ranking these heroes, but what I will say, you have the most DPS opportunities. Dragon Blade with the grab combo is still very lethal and even though Zenyatta has a kick you can still stop him from a good amount of distance so when it comes to Genji the only reason why I'm not putting him in S tier is because there's just a few more or less just two DPS that outperform him at this current moment that could easily get nerfed but he's still a very solid choice that if you were to practice him and get a Crunchyroll subscription tomorrow that it will be worth your time energy and effort and also lack of getting girls because if you're a Genji main you're you're probably not getting girls because you're spending more time just practicing your ghost dashes. Hammond, I mean, what do I really got to say about this Ronin? He, he gets outperformed by a lot of other tanks when it comes to 1v1 matchup, but that's not to say he's completely useless. He's similar to Doomfist where you really got to practice his abilities, specifically his like grapple and rollout to unlock the most annoying part about him, which is not stopping him. There's less CC from the cold casting the May, which were previous hard counters to Hammond, but Sombra, who we, we will talk about later on, is still very, very popular at Overwatch 2, which is stopping the, the hamster boy. So that's why I'm putting him in C tier because there's still counters to stop him and there's also just better takes to play. Why play him when you can play somebody that doesn't get hard countered by Sombra, who literally counters everybody at this point? Hanzo, 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 Hanzo. Do I have to talk about him? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not talking about him. I'm putting him in B tier. He's average. Why? Just cuz, alright, I don't want to talk about him. He gives me so much trauma and now the scatter arrow is back with his storm arrow? If you were to ask me three weeks ago who I thought the best tank was, I, pr I probably would have still said D.Va and then I would have probably also said Zarya, but then I would have said Rodok because my god, the one-shot hook combo is still very lethal in Overwatch 2 and the fact that there's one less tank stopping you from getting your squishy targets, feeding off of them like the larva-loving person that Rodog is, it's not to scoff at but because Ana is so good all you gotta do is anti him and because of that one single ability that's why he's in C tier but I will say he is better than Hammond because well Rodok easily beats out Hammond and he also beats out Doofus easily like the hook is still very good and is one of if not the best CC ability still left in Overwatch 2 so fortunately or unfortunately depending on how you look at it we didn't get to experience the Jotes era for that long because the Junk Queen was only made available for a couple weeks for the beta but the Overwatch League did and man it was the most boring in time to watch the Overwatch League in my personal opinion. But then she got nerfed and that kind of made her one of the below average tanks to play. But with that being said, there's just better tanks to play. If you want sustainability, the Junker Queen, with the nerf, you can't really get that all that much compared to the 700 behemoth that is D.Va. So that's why I'm putting her in C tier, but I will put her above Hammond because, I don't know, I feel like the Junk Queen is really good on push maps, but when it comes to other maps, like maybe, say, uh, Control, not so much. The other resident of Junker Town is here, and his name is Junkrat. And really, the same problems in Overwatch 1 is here in Overwatch 2. He is just way too squishy. He truly 
basically is a glass cannon of a hero. That's the way that I describe him because he has so much DPS, but he can easily get countered and stopped. When it comes to tanks, Zarya and Diva, very prominent heroes, and easily counter him. Farah, Soldier, Ash, long range heroes can also stop Junkrat too. Like the only way, the only way that can truly be viable is if you're a mobile Junkrat, but even then, you're putting yourself in dangerous situations because you're launching yourself in the air or launching yourself closer to the enemy. But if you do, <laughs> he's, he's so annoying, man. Like the annoying rat is a truly meta comp, but it could easily get stopped. That's why he's still in D tier. <laughs> All right, so we have finally reached the newest hero, Kariko. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time talking about this hero because I feel like she's very misunderstood and, and just confusing when it comes to using her. She's more or less like a DPS hero disguised as a support character because she's not out healing an Ana or Batiste. And, and frankly, not even out healing the Mercy and the Morris. So of course, you're gonna be mainly DPSing. And that's the biggest problem is that if you have somebody like a Lucio and a Kuriko on your team, that can be very difficult, especially for heroes like D.Va who have no self-healing ability. But then that's also where another problem comes up because her DPS is very hard to use. Now, I never like to use player skill as a reason for ranking some of these heroes, but when it comes to Grigo, there's a reason why her headshot multiplier is three times rather than the two times that's typically given. And it's because it, it's hard to hit. So you're not doing a lot of heals and your DPS, it's all dependent on your skill. And even if you're very skillful, it's still almost like random if you're getting those headshots. But the saving grace for Kriko is her immortality grenade or her cleansing grenade or just her little heal bell, however you call it. That ability can be very useful for someone like Roadhog who gets easily countered by the Ana anti grenade and it can stop heroes like the Junker Queen all together. So here's what I'll say about Kriko. What Kriko is suffering from is I think what's very similar what happened to Sorgen is that she first released, people didn't like to play her because they didn't have the time with her yet. Over time, they start to practice her, they start to learn when to use your cleansing grenade, they start to learn how to get those lucky headshots and learn to balance the DPS and the heal and also just know when to pull out the Kriko. When it comes to like a Lucio or even a Mercy, yeah, maybe don't pull out the Kriko. As of right now, I'm going to be putting her in C tier because not only are there better healers or support heroes to play, but also right now, we don't have the time. We're on to the Frog DJ Lucio. So one thing I really haven't been talking about are specific game modes. And when it comes to push, this is Lucio's game mode because you're going to be walking back and forth from the that bot a lot and not only can Lucio get to the <laughs> the robot a lot quicker but he can also get his teammates there faster and when you're playing a hero like Orisa on push this is your go-to hero but besides push he's also good against dive comp you can stop the Winston from jumping onto you you can counter the Genji blade also you're not going to be getting one clipped by the tracer because you're always raw riding so that's why I think Lucio is a solid pick especially for push but other game modes but just remember that there's on a bad tease. that's why I'm putting Lucio at the A tier for right now oh Oh, May, 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 they completely ravaged you. I miss your freeze so much, May, but I've learned to adapt with May. It's very similar to like Doofist, where just because they completely changed your hero kit doesn't make her completely useless. You just gotta learn to adapt. And all you gotta do for May is just spray and pray. Just hold down the left click and you're gonna be doing your job as May. I promise you. I mean, against the Diva, she's really good, but against the Zarya and even a Winston, she's completely useless and no longer does she have CC, so she can't really stop uh, the Doomfist or the Hammond. So who is she really going to be countering? So what you're going to be doing is trying to get those ice school snipes and maybe just spraying and praying. That being said, there's better DPS to play. I'm putting her in C tier because... The wall is still really good, man. Against the Roadhog, you can stop. Against the Junk Raid, you can stop. Against the Zara, you can stop. You're just not gonna be freezing them. So you all gonna dogpile whoever you stop with the wall. Oh boy. Ranking Mercy is like trying to rank K-pop groups because you're gonna be wrong either way. <laughs> people saying that she's completely useless and people saying that she's completely broken. It's because she's not really fitting in one single category. She's definitely not a DPS hero, but she's also not really that much of a healer compared to Ana and Batiste and even Mora and even Mora can get a lot of heals and do a lot of DPS. So where are you getting the most value when it comes to Mercy? Well, sustainability because she's able to just to rubber band all over the place, but also damage boosting. And that even that's controversial because there is support Mercy players that don't really damage boost all that much. But if you're damage boosting the Ash, or if you're damage boosting really anybody, you can get a lot of value. So just depending on the DPS player that you're damage boosting. So because of that, and also because I'm very scared of Mercy mains, I'm just putting her right in the middle, in the B category of here. Smack dab in the middle. B is average, and I feel like Mercy is the average healer. You can get a lot of heals, or you can get a lot of damage boost, and your ultimate 
it can be a really great initiator ultimate and sometimes like hey, every hero is controversial in some way shape or form mercy just so happens to be one of the most popular and also one of the most controversial but the other reason why mercy is a controversial pick is because she's seen as the easy healer i'm not agreeing with that because you want to know the true easy healer to play that's mora most mora players know that she doesn't take a lot of skills this is the healer that i play because i don't gotta think you just gotta pee on your teammates and you gotta suck up the genji both very sussy abilities no pause on that but that's not necessarily a bad thing because just because it's easier to execute your job you're executing your job that's what you want to do especially as a healer you want to be able to heal your teammates and you can do that with a diving winston or a diving diva with an aggro zari with a speed boosting lucio like she fits in a lot of comps that yeah maybe on and batiste can be better primary healers but if you want the best of both words heal and damage mora is your go-to she has lots of opportunity and also a decent and de decent ultimate B tier is where we're putting her because she is also another average healer that can get a lot of heals, damage, a lot of opportunities for her. Now, when it comes to the most underrated here in Overwatch 2, that award goes to Orisa and she runs with it. Now, the holy trinity of tanks right now is Zarya, Diva, and Winston because they all kind of counter themselves. But Orisa is kind of like the black sheep out of those tanks because she's not your go-to tank. She's not the must-pick tank that is known with those three heroes. When it comes to a specific game mode, this is the hero that you want to play and that game mode is push in push you need real estate to win and with orissa you can eat up so much space because of your abilities with your javelin spin you can forcibly push people off yes when it comes to reinhardt you can charge and pin them but you put yourself in a dangerous situation with orissa you spin and then you fortify but even if you want more space just just throw your dart throw your javelin at them and you protect yourself this is why orissa does so well in push it's because she's able to stand her ground and push when she needs it's literally in the name you need to push and Arissa does that the best that's why I'm putting her in the a category of heroes because she's not the best tank she's definitely not and she does really well in one specific game mode and when it comes to the other game modes she, she doesn't do uh, that well compared to the other ones so I think you guys know at this point that when it comes to ranking Farah, we're ranking Farah, not pharmacy if you're ranking pharmacy I probably put them in a tier but no it's just Farah. and when it comes to Farah, she's easily counterable you got to play an Ash, a Soldier, a Kolkassi, a Widow. Shoot, even a Diva can counter the Fairy. That's why I'm so confident in putting her in the C category of heroes because, uh, yeah, she has the mobility. Yeah, she has the DPS, but uh, she can get stopped. And it just takes that quick of a switch because everybody knows, shoot the Fairy with a hit scan. I gotta play hit scan. Now, when it comes to Reaper, this is one of the most interesting cases for a hero because his job as a tank buster is more obsolete than ever. But it's not completely off the table because there's still one tank for you to shred. It just really depends on whatever that tank is. If it's a Winston or a Rissa or Rodog, you're gonna do really well. Those aren't the most popular heroes to play right now. Well, maybe with the exception of Winston. There's a D.Va and a Zarya that can still protect yourself from the, the, the Reaper bullets that are coming your way. But even then, Reaper can still stop them if they just time it out right. Like, Re like <sighs> Reaper's so interesting, man. There's less CC stopping you, but there's also just a lot of other things that can still stop you, like a Zarya bubble or a Defense Matrix. I'm stumped. Maybe if he had a Lucio, he could be really good, and a Zenyatta on a tank could make his job a whole lot easier. For right now, I'll put him in B tier with the other hit scan heroes. Maybe over time we'll start to see him be a lot more prevalent, especially maybe with the rise of Roadhog or Hammond or other heroes that are just big and easy to hit that can't easily hit a Reaper. <laughs> Reinhardt, completely misunderstood. Everyone thought that he was going to be the worst take in Overwatch 2, but over time, and I especially even heard Flash say this too is that he's getting better he's not the best tank though i will say that but i do feel like he's one of the better mediocre tanks to play there's still a lot of value that can get out of the 1200 hp shield being able to stop the hit scan bullets being able to stop the roadhog and his hook and being able to protect yourself if you charge in and you no longer want to commit to the charge you can now cancel back away with the shield and get back to your team plus you could also get a full earth shatter because there's less shields on the field and you can insta kill somebody if they happen to get underneath your giant hammer. However, Reinhardt, he is getting old. Their steroids are wearing off and Zarya is overtaking him in the wrestling match. That's why I'm putting him in the B tier of heroes because he can beat a lot of tanks, but a lot of tanks also beat him too. But if you're a Reinhardt main, just know that you're not useless. We still love and appreciate you. But if you could play Zarya, that'd also be helpful too. Now, while Reinhardt's all exciting, swinging his hammer, getting fat, earth shatters, Sigma, 
he is just so slow and so boring, but that, that's still very valuable because you just have so much sustainability. You have your shield, you have your suck, you have your rock that can push people away. You're just not really going to be dying all that much, but you're also not going to be killing a lot with the Sigma. And in a game where the tank could also be seen as a third DPS, like in the case of D.Va and Zarya Sigma, he doesn't fit that DPS tank style, but he also just fits the traditional tank format, which is just holding your ground and staying there and not letting them get past you. It's also just so boring, man, and we can't understate that. That's why I'm putting him in B tier. All right, so the third newest hero in Overwatch 2 is Soldier, and what I said in my very first Overwatch 2 tier list is what I'm saying here. It takes a little bit of time to get used to playing Soldier. You shoot the first 20 bullets, and then her gun starts to bloom, and then the bullets go all over the place, and you're not hitting your shots. But if you're able to charge your railgun and get those headshots on those squishies, which you can get a lot of because there's no longer a lot of shields stopping you unless they're playing a right heart. And Sigma, you're gonna be one of the most effective DPS of all time. You build that thing up to 100 and you get a headshot and squish it, you're gonna be tearing through the competition. And her ultimate, which you can get relatively easy because you just gotta get that consistent damage down, you're gonna be headshotting everybody. Like when it comes to Sorjin, she has the most Call of Duty moments when she's just flooding the kill feed with her ultimate. That being said, I'm putting her in the S tier of heroes because she has so much DPS opportunities consistently and also can just snipe down people so easily too. So just Henry 6, I would say he's the most average out of all the hit scan heroes. He doesn't do anything that wows you. Like he has good consistent damage. He has a heal pot ability that allows a solo queue player to be able to flourish in Overwatch if you have no friends like me. Himself along with his ultimate gets stopped by D.Va though. So that's something that you also got to consider. But if you can get past the defense matrix, he could be an average hero to play. So that's why I'm putting him in B tier because I mean, if, if you're a uh, Cole Cassidy, man, you don't gotta switch to Soldier, but if you're a Soldier, man, you don't gotta switch to Ash because you can do good with any one of these hit scan heroes in Overwatch 2, I feel like. <sighs> Man, I hate this girl. I hate Sober so much in Overwatch 2. And I really hope those leaks of nerfing Sober is true because there is no argument that Sober is the most broken hero right now in Overwatch 2. And I don't use that word very lightly, but she is quite literally broken to the point where she's a must pick. All you gotta do is go invisible, stand in the back, and hack the tank. And the tank can't do anything because it's not like they can dive you as Sober because you can hack so far away. You build EMP so quick and EMP is the closest to the I automatically win button in Overwatch 2. Now I will say when it comes to playing Sombra, she's <laughs> okay maybe anybody could just pick her up and play her but just because you pick Sombra doesn't mean you win. There's been so many times where the enemy team picks Sombra as a last disc effort and they suck even more because they don't play Sombra. They're either not hacking enough or doing too much damage or they're staying out of invisibility for way too long. So when it comes to Sombra uh, be careful. Just be careful careful when playing her and just try to be as annoying as possible hack with your teammates and call it out because if you call out your hacks then your team can dive whoever is hacked and automatically kill them oh symmetra 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 when are they gonna figure you out girl every symmetra main knows that whenever they pull out symmetra their team is thinking oh my god we could be playing somebody else but hey let's roll with it and there have been times where symmetra specifically on like control maps where she just absolutely dominates because she's able to build a nest on the map she stops the genji she stops a tracer. She can even stop a Zarya from pushing forward if they just ignore the sentries. And everybody ignores the sentries. However, she is one of, if not the most easiest here to counter right next to Junkrat. Which is why I'm putting her right next to Junkrat. Because Symmetra, besides the teleporter, just... Uh, it's, just, it's just so hard to pull off a good Symmetra. But <laughs> moving on to Torbjorn. So similar to Bastion, Torbjorn hasn't been in competitive for the same amount of time. So because of that, would it be fair to put Torbjorn in F tier? I mean, he is available in quick play. But are we really playing Torbjorn equipped with baby? Hey, maybe we're, we're using our, our angry mode ability and pulling out our hammer and just hammering the competition. But I'm putting Torbjorn in F tier just for the sole reason that he hasn't been made available in competitive. If he was, I'd probably put him in D tier. So there's not much of a difference, I'm gonna be honest. Next up is our favorite cover art girl, Tracer. Now, what made it so potent in Overwatch 1 is that she was able to flank behind the enemy team and pick off squishies, most notably like Zenyatta. But now Zenyatta not only has a passive self-healing ability and his shield regeneration, but he also has his kick, meaning that he can just push Tracer away like, ew, get out of here, ew. 
Ew. So she's gonna have a little bit more hard over time picking off the squishy support here. She still can. You just gotta stand a little bit more farther than how you used to back in Overwatch 1. But you also gotta consider that DM defense matrix can also still make you useless. But you also gotta consider that someone like Cole Cassidy no longer has his flashbang. Meaning that you have a little bit more room to uh, flank behind the enemy back line. You just... Uh, th that's the Fortnite dance. Anyway, I'm gonna be putting her in the A tier of heroes because depending on the player's skill, you can still be very lethal and very annoying. Just kind of similar like Genji. Vidomaker. This is the hero that's literally all dependent on your aim. Because you're not going to be countering anybody with your abilities. What, what, what your Venom Mine's going to be stopping the Roadhog? Are you serious? No, maybe the Tracer actually. But uh, wh when it comes to Widowmaker, it's all about your snipes. And in Overwatch 2, I mean, there's less shields blocking you. If they have a Reinhardt and a Sigma, yeah, it's going to be hard. If they have a D.Va and Winston, they're going to be diving you and you got to grapple out of there. But if they have a Roadhog, a, a Junker Queen, and shoot, even an Orisa, you should be getting headshots for days. It's just all dependent on your skill. And some of the best of the best players can really pop off with Widowmaker. That's why I'm putting her in the A tier of heroes. But if they have your counters, she could be easily C or B tier. But A, I think is a pretty solid place to put her because, well, she can easily get insta kills just like Sojourn. But Sojourn can do Widowmaker's job way better. And she also has a slide and also has thicker thighs. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sojourn's thighs are just thicker and better. Winston, one of the holy trinities of the tanks right Right now, the enemy team is playing a Zarya. You play a Winston because they can no longer build the charge because, well, they, they, they're they not getting charged for, <laughs> from your electricity. But if they're playing a D.Va, then they easily counter you as Winston because they boop you away when it comes to the dive. But if they're playing a D.Va, then you play a uh, Zarya. You, you understand what I'm trying to say. When it comes to the 1v1 matchup, it makes sense to play Winston. But you got to remember, there's four other heroes played on the field. And all you got to do to stop the Winston is not only play a D.Va, but you can also play a Reaper. You can play a hit scan, You can play a fair and junker to burn down the bubble and stop the wood. like there's a lot of things that could answer to the winston yeah while he can counter heroes like a, a genji who is super popular right now and maybe even a sojourn i mean you can stop him with the tank and stop with the dps that's why he's not a must pick tank but he's still a really good tank to the point where he's in the a tier of heroes it sucks that we waited until this point of the tier list video that we finally reached zarya because in my personal opinion if there was a must pick hero in overwatch 2 to, it would go to Zarya. Zarya is not only one of the best tanks, but just one of the best heroes to play in Overwatch 2. The only person that can really stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Zarya is Winston, but when it comes to other heroes, she burns down D.Va. She can stop the Genji deflect by just shooting past it. She can shoot a lot of these things. Like, she is just is so good, man. She has so much DPS opportunity, so much sustainability, so much protection, and her grab. Her grab is still one of, if not the best combo ults in the game with a Hanzo Dragon, a Dragon Blade, a Junkrat Riptire, even a, who, who else is it? A May Freeze even if you just want to combo even more CC ultimate. The only time that I maybe wouldn't play Zarya is on push. That's where I would play Orisa maybe, but you can still play Zarya on push because she's that good. And finally, the last hero on our list is Zenyatta with the brand new kick ability, meaning that he can keep himself protected against flank heroes like a Genji or a Tracer or shoot, maybe even a Doofus from time to time. Maybe not. Maybe not so much a Doofus, but Discord is nothing to laugh at, especially if you throw it on tanks that have so much beefiness. You're going to thank that Zenyatta for being on the field. Transcendence is really good, especially consider that Ana's anti grenade can easily get countered by Kuriko's heal bell, but you also got to remember that you're playing a Kuriko and a Zenyatta. That's going to be very low heals. So in a game where heals is still very important, you better be getting those kills with Zenyatta. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck in the B tier of heroes. Now, when I'm recording this, I totally forgot to have Echo in this tier list because for whatever reason, it wasn't included in this pre-made tier list. But the way that I would rank Echo is that she's a much better fair because her ultimate allows for way more like pushes than what a Ferris does. I mean, it's notorious that Ferris like, justice reigns for you can't do anything. But she can still get countered by a lot of hit scans, Sorgeon being one of them. And if you're gonna be playing a Sorgeon, then why would you replace a Sorgeon for an egg? You know what I mean? So that's why we're putting her just at B tier with the rest of these other DPS that could easily stop her as well. And that is my tier list for all the heroes in Overwatch 2. And if you skip to end to the very end, well, you didn't even hear my explanation. Why did you skip end? But just know that if you're good with a specific hero, like me with May, you can make a hero work. Just know that you gotta put in a little extra work for maybe bottom tier heroes. When it comes to upper echelon heroes, it's a little bit easier. Anyway guys, I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching more Overwatch 2 videos to come and bye.